Hell Speaking yeah. of Avicii, you, I don't know if you were there, but you told me how you got to go to his old house and got to go in the studio. Yeah. Can you tell <laughs> yeah, us that yeah. story? Yeah, so this was funny because I'm pretty sure we were like touring. I don't, I think we were doing like Lollapalooza or I, I remember it was like something really gnarly where like I hadn't slept for three days and I think I had like traveled in like three countries or something like that. But I had gotten back and I had gotten invited to a party and I was like, oh God, I need to sleep. And then I found out where it was and like the person who bought it um, was throwing the party and it was Avicii's old house. And I was like, all right, well, I'm 100% going there. And it was so funny because like I got there and like some of those like guitar things like like the you know like the guitar racks were like still on the walls and like a few things were still there and then I was like where is the studio so like I went I went on like because it's a massive house it's like right up the street here but it's like massive house and I was like I gotta find the studio and I go downstairs I find the studio and it had got converted into a poker room so it was a big poker table sick studio like it had like glass windows like you see like everything and just like like so cool and there were these two massage chairs like you know those ones that are like the pods that you sit in mm. and like literally like you could like blast off in the hell yeah <laughs> yeah it's like literally i saw those and i was so tired and like literally i remember just going and sitting in one and i had like a bunch of friends there and i think i went through like four or five cycles of the chair like starting and stopping of massaging me because i was so mashed up from traveling that like literally i fell asleep and my friends were like messaging me off the hook like where the hell are you and then one of them came and found me and i was like in the chair just like, <laughs> <laughs> like laundry asleep, machine. like completely out of it oh and i was just like this is this is great like just like nice nice vibe it was That's a good vibe epic. to be I'm, in there i'm sure you guys have found yourself in quite a few situations where you're like how the fuck did I end up here? Like, yeah. how cool. Oh my God. Big the, time. The first time we were like, okay, we need to move to Los Angeles. So picture this. It's like 2013. And we come here and we're like, all right, what should we do? Like, we didn't have any plan. And Adrian Grenier from Entourage, of course, mm -hmm. Vinny Chase, our yeah. guy. Um, he had done a campus tour where he was like going to colleges, meet and greets, party. And you DJ for, for it, right? It was, no, it was for his movie that he was doing. He was doing like a, a movie, like a cult movie tour kind of thing. Okay. And I, It wasn't and, Aquaman? <laughs> Sadly not. James Cameron couldn't secure yeah. the funding. I am yeah. Queens Boulevard. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I, I ended up like uh, doing an interview with him because I did this. I was like part of the school radio. And I was like ra interviewing a bunch of people and I ended up meeting him. And then his manager, who's his cousin, ended up giving me his card being like, if you ever come to L.A., like hit me up. And um, basically, like after that, we had decided to go to L.A. And I remember being like, hey, well, now's a great time. So that week was kind of filled with like him sort of like either telling us where to go, like, oh, go to this spot. Like, this is cool. And or, or like come to this party or whatever. So like one of the nights there was this pajama party like literally in the show and we were going around los angeles being like where the hell do we get pajamas and we were stressed because we were like oh this is like first like la party like celebrities whatever and we literally found places like that were like 300 dollars pajamas and i was like well i can't afford that and then we went to target and all got matching ones for like seven dollars <laughs> like seven dollars like it was so funny we looked like ridiculous we showed up to this party and like half the people weren't even dressed up as as like a true la party it's like a theme <laughs> party and like half the people aren't even dressed up in it Classic. and it was crazy like they had like a big like blow up like like a, a bouncy castle and like a, a huge monkey with like kegs underneath of it and like it was actually like a really sick party like um the dude from what was a euro trip scotty doesn't know oh, scotty scotty yeah. was there hell, he yeah, didn't I know that. yeah he didn't uh, know you were banging his band in the sunday or whatever <laughs> <laughs> it was like ellen page like a bunch of like and like this is the first time we'd ever come to la like seeing like anybody famous so we were just like losing it and then we had gotten in like a beer pong tournament and like it was like the americans versus the canadians and then we won and it was like a whole thing and like this like really rich dude was like yeah like if you win you can drive my beamer and then like afterwards he gave us the keys and we're like well we're drunk now so we can't <laughs> sick <laughs> <laughs> when you first like when you first came out here were you like this is the place like we need to be or yeah. oh yeah that single experience like literally you're in this mansion i was still i think in like second or third year of college mm. and vinnie chase himself rolls in literally in his underwear with two chicks on him literally yeah. living yeah. like he did in the tv show and i was like wow this is next level like he had tidy whiteies on and a leather jacket and he had like two girls like yeah i was just like i was like this guy's ridiculous that's so when we realized that shit was different in los 
Angeles uh, and we just needed to be a part of it however we could. <laughs> and the even story of how we got to that point was crazy because Joe had this card, like we were saying, of the manager. And we were like, dude, we can't just hit this guy up and be like, yo, we're in LA, like let's chill. Right. Like we're two college kids. So I, I look up the website on the business card and post entourage, they're doing a bunch of weird avant-garde short films on YouTube. And so the hook emailing him was, hey, we love your short films on YouTube. Like, can we just be an extra in like this stupid zombie Funny. thing? Like we're such big fans. And he's like, ah, oh, man, thank you so much. I'm not filming these right now, but we should kick it for sure. Oh, and we're God. like, done. Yeah. And then, and then like Joe was saying, he just took us all over Los Angeles. And it's we were like, funny. Like he set us up with a couple of places that I'm like, I met some people and like, I'm still like, like best friends with them. This is like 10 years, like wow. literally like 10 years ago. Yeah. Fast forward to today. I have no idea what either of them are doing, except if you've been on TikTok recently, there's a really popular Tom Cruise impersonator. Mm. And the it deep, turns is out. Is it a deep, the guy that does like the deep fake? Yeah. And it turns out this guy. Is that him? It, yeah. He's what? Like, what? Yeah. He's literally a Tom Cruise impersonator. Oh, and man. he's like, has millions of followers and views just being a fake Tom Cruise. That's so funny. <laughs> so you can't think of a more LA story. I didn't than know that, that right. but I'm going to look at this after. Yeah, it's so oh, yeah. wild.